we're talking from, I think when I spoke to him, it was about noonish. And right. I found out about him being dead. Um, it was about 5, 4 or 5 p.m. Uh, Spain time. And I actually found out on Twitter, which You're is joking. crazy. Um, oh so, yeah, the prison no had my phone you? number. No, the prison what? had my phone number. Um, the prison had the attorney's phone number. Nobody even called the attorney. They. Oh, my um, God. They went immediately to the press, and that is disgusting. I was, um, that is so absolutely I, disgusting. I know. <laughs> it was infuriating, and it didn't, you know, yeah. Oh my god, I I didn't even know that. That is really something that I mean, I'm speechless. I'm it's so sorry. a terrible way to find out, you know. Um, yeah, and so I was, I was just on Twitter and. Because I, what I would do is I, I would collect the daily headlines for John um, just so we'd have something to talk about and kind of keep him up to date of what was happening um, in the world. And I actually still have the, you know, I had it in my notepad on uh, my phone. So I have all the headlines still from that day. But um, And somebody, I got a DM and it was in all capitals and it just said, oh my God, tell me this isn't true. And I immediately went to Google and, and sure enough, um, sure enough. And it's just completely irresponsible on the prison's part, mm -hmm. you know? And so maybe people can understand why I'm so adamant about getting the autopsy report, you know, because you just don't do those things. Mm -hmm. You know, there's a proper way to handle things, you know, and, and there, sh there should have been a tight lid on the situation. Yeah. You always should notify the family and you should definitely never give a cause of death when you haven't even done an autopsy report, when the body is still yeah. in the cell. After that, I, I managed to call my mom and just was just crying. And I kept oh, saying, I told him I didn't want this. And she was like, who are you talking about? Like, I told God I didn't want this. I didn't want to have to deal with this, you know? Yeah. Not that I felt like this was going to happen, but just I, you know, I, you know, I have faith. I believe in God and I was praying, mm -hmm. you know, that he would get out, that it wouldn't end like this. You know, I it never in my wildest dreams did I think that my God. that I wouldn't see him again and be able to hug him and tell him, you know, I love you. And um, after that, I don't really remember anything. I just remember the attorney saying that I could go to the prison and collect his belongings. And I can't even tell you when that happened. Yeah, um, I, I know it happened the day where I gave an interview and, you know, I had yeah. the sunglasses on and I was in front of the prison. I don't even know what day that was. Um, yeah, I can imagine. It's it's like yes, you're in a state of, of complete... Um, of just disbelief, yeah. utter disbelief and... And I still am, you know, I, for a long time, I still kind of grappled with the fact that, you know, this, this is, this is not real. This is not my life. This is not what's happening right now. It's just not. And it's easy for me to put that out of my mind, but you know, it's like, it comes crashing back to reality. You know, the longer I'm having to stay here um, mm -hmm. and then having to identify his body and, you know, it's just um, it's just hard, you know. And then dealing with people yeah. and their their comments and and everything. Oh my god! It's like these questions that people ask me are things that I've obsessed about since the day that he died. 